You're listening to The Voluntary Life, where you can hear ideas for finding freedom in an unfree world. Visit thevoluntarylife.com to connect with the show and hear all past episodes. Here's your host, Jake. Hi, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. This is another episode in the series on entrepreneurship, and I'm really grateful for all the feedback that I've had about the podcast episodes so far, and I know that entrepreneurship is one of the subjects that is of most interest to people, so I'm very happy to be doing um, more on this subject. And I wanted to respond to one area about entrepreneurship that has been brought up a number of times in the feedback that I've had so far, and that's negotiating with clients or negotiation in general. And I think this is um, a really vital and important subject too. So uh, this episode is basically going to be everything that I know or remember and everything I learned about negotiating. And I think it'll be partly just some really practical things which might seem uh, ridiculously obvious to you, but they weren't to me. Um, so I, it, so I'm going to just say them in case they are helpful, um, and hopefully some also some more fundamental things about um, negotiating as part of all voluntary relationships, because you could argue that doing business is really all about negotiation. It's all about finding ways to reach agreements with other people uh, to get where it is that you want to go and where they want to go. And also you could say negotiating is a fundamental part of all relationships in life because it's about finding a way of reaching agreements between yourself and others um, in the pursuit of your happiness and their happiness. So I think it's a great subject. And so, yeah, let's get started with, first of all, just the really the really practical things that I learned. My experience is very much from a consulting background. Uh, That was what my business was. And in consultancy, you do have an ongoing relationship with a client through the course of the project. There's a lot of back and forth and discussion and things that need to be resolved with with clients. Um, I guess in a product-based business, uh, the dynamics are slightly different. But Still, negotiating is a a huge aspect of product-based businesses too. So I hope this is relevant um, for you if that's what you're you're doing as well. So I guess just some of the things that I, starting off with some of the really practical things. um, The first thing that I really learned is just how important it was to me to write everything down. I mean, I know that sounds kind of ridiculous, but it is actually very very widespread and common for people to negotiate and have lots of discussions and stuff doesn't get written down and then you have different uh, memories of what was agreed and where you're at and different expectations of what has been agreed and where you're at and that leads to all sorts of confusion and difficulty and I just found that life was much easier negotiations were much smoother if everything is written down. And that means um, basically any time you have a meeting, and now you I mean you can do this in any way that you like. Some people have very complicated meeting minutes that they fill out after any meeting and, and all of that. I personally just sent an email to the client after a discussion saying, it was great to see you. Here's what I took from our meeting. You know, this is what we've discussed. Is that, you know, is that your understanding too? And that itself is less formal and that worked fine for me. But the most important thing I found is I really needed to have one place where I had all of the correspondence about any negotiation that I could find easily. Now, for me, that was in project folders in my email client. So I would have a folder for each project and I'd have all the correspondence um, about that project and if there had been a meeting then they, you know there would have been one of my emails following it saying here's what I took from our meeting so that way I could track everything that had been said about a negotiation and look back at that paper trail now you can do this in any way that you like you may not use folders you might use tags or you might have some other system um, but the most important thing is that you have a trusted place where you can find everything that has been 
written and said about a negotiation and that it is written down. And in that sense, you know, you do act a little bit like your client's PA in, in some aspects. You're taking responsibility for writing stuff down. And it could be said that sometimes you know, you're sort of acting as a secretary to the whole negotiation process. But ultimately, that, that is really helpful for everyone. And most importantly, it's really helpful for you. And if you find someone else who does this, if they send you an email with a really clear understanding of what was just agreed, that's fantastic. It's great fun to do business with those people because it's just, everything's a lot easier. But in you know, I I start I start from the position that that's what I have to do, um, and that just helps me. Um, so I would really strongly suggest that. Another thing that I learned fairly early on is just how important it is to be explicit about how I want to do business. And I, I mean, for me, that means having a set of standard terms of business. And these can be things like how you expect to be paid, when you expect to be paid, whether or not you um, are willing to do a number of revision cycles for the, for the work that you deliver and how you will handle that, how you will handle changes to the brief of a project. Oh, yeah. And most importantly, for me, the one important term was a limit on indemnity. So in other words, to say I'm doing this project under the agreement that this is only worth so much money and you can't sue me for millions and millions of pounds. And we both agree up front that that's the kind of business that we're doing here. You can have whatever terms are important to you, but just being explicit about the way that you want to do business up front saves a lot of hassle later on because it means that people know where you're coming from. And, you know, there's room for negotiation there if they don't like some of the ways in which you want to do business, they can talk to you about it and you can come to some agreement. But the, the point is just being explicit up front makes it all a lot easier because it means that there's no different expectations about how you want to do business. And that only works if you have really reasonable standard terms and short standard terms. So I'm talking one or two pages of the things that are really important. There's nothing worse than being given a, somebody's standard terms, which is like a book, and there's all sorts of weird things that they want to do as part of working together. That's just so undermining of trust in the beginning. So uh, my experience was the first time I saw somebody's standard terms that were um, two sheets of A4, or even one sheet of A4, I think, with relatively small font, I just thought that's fantastic. And frankly, we pretty much copied their standard terms and used them um, ourselves and used our own version of them because I just thought it was so clear and simple and it just meant that everything that was important to us was set up from. So I guess the next thing that I, I learned about negotiation is that it is a discipline. There is stuff that you can learn about this. I mean, nobody ever talked to me about negotiation in school. It was never discussed in my family. I didn't know that there was, you know, a body of knowledge about negotiating and that you can learn about it. So, you know, what I learned was that I can actually learn about negotiation. And I, I read quite a few books on it and I would really recommend that as well because, it, you know, it helps you in your own mind work out what it is that you're trying to do and why negotiation works better in some contexts and worse in others, you know, why things have worked well in one negotiation and so forth. The best thing that I found is a book called Getting to Yes um, by Fisher and Yuri, U-R-Y, that is. And it's considered to be um, like the best book on negotiation. And I think it's a fantastic book. So a lot of the stuff that I'm going to be talking about now is, is from that book. Um, but I recommend that you have a look at it yourself. So one of the things that, um, that was quite a revelation to me in negotiating, um, particularly in a business context, is just how little importance price has in the bigger picture of everything. It's very easy to get very, very focused on price and to get into a haggling war about price. And the thing about coming to any kind of agreement with somebody is that price is only one small part of a complicated 
relationship that you're trying to build um, where you're trying to provide value to somebody and they're going to give you um, value or money in return. And if they don't want to pay a specific price for something, there's many other things that can change that price that could be worth value to you. There's many, many ways in which they can give value to you that are not part of the price and you can give value to them that are not part of the price so you can negotiate about price because lots of different things have value and you can be quite flexible about it because it was a real revelation to me to realize that price was only one of the things that mattered and that what also mattered to me was for example the timing of delivery is there flexibility on delivering uh, a project later? Because that's worth something to me if we have a huge workload on at the moment and we need to spread out uh, our workload. Is there flexibility on the timing of payment? Because upfront payments are worth a lot to me and that helps with my cash flow and so forth. Is there flexibility on what else the client could give me? So for example, is is there a potential for follow up work and can they give us referrals can they give us uh, can they recommend us to other people because that's worth something too so there's a lot else that can be negotiated apart from price and that's something that i really um got a lot out of learning to, to not just focus on price but to be aware of all the other things that can be negotiated too something that comes out of the getting to yes book which is really helpful, is the concept of your best alternative to a negotiated agreement. So they have this idea that what determines the fundamental dynamics of a negotiation is your BATNA or best alternative to a negotiated agreement. And the idea is that when you go into a negotiation, you and the client, the other side, both want to get something out of this negotiation and if this negotiation fails then there is a best alternative you know what are you going to do if you can't reach an agreement now it, it's really it, i found it massively helpful to be aware of what my best alternative is and what the client's best alternative is so i'll give you an example when i actually came to sell my business we had grown the business to a point where it was profitable very profitable so we were in a position where we wanted to negotiate a sale but if we didn't sell we could still continue running the business profitably um, and look to sell to somebody else or just continue making profit so we had quite a strong negotiating position because we didn't have to sell and we were able to be very clear about that and we thought about what the best alternative of the company that bought my business was and their best alternative would be to try and develop something similar in-house or to try and buy some other company. Um, but since there weren't really anyone, any other companies around that they could buy, and since we knew that it would take them a very long time to develop something in-house and that it would be fraught with difficulties, we thought that that put us in a pretty good position because they really needed to buy us if they wanted to uh, obtain these skills and, and these uh, software tools and so forth. So being aware of what your best alternative is and what, what the person that you're negotiating with's best alternative is really helps you understand what the dynamics of that negotiation are. It's really helpful. Something else that comes from the um, Getting to Yes book that I found really helpful is the idea of finding objective standards to negotiate about rather than and avoiding having like a contest of wills. So, for example, if you get into a negotiation, which is one side saying, well, I want it to be like this and the other side saying, well, I want it to be like that, then you're in a contest of wills. And that is a very unprincipled and bad kind of negotiation, which is very fraught with difficulties. And the idea is you try and find objective standards for what, how to resolve um, you know, differences. So for example, if you disagree about something like, I don't know, the price, then an objective standard could be 
a market price for what it is that you're discussing because that's something that you can look to and compare as a frame of reference to give you an idea of you know of, of some external standard if you disagree about some kind, something like the terms of payment or delivery times or something you can look to something like industry standards or something else or you can even just look to any kind of third party that you can both see as reasonable to provide an outside objective view of your uh, of your disagreement whatever it is that you look to if you try and find some kind of objective standard to base your negotiation on it always um, helps the negotiation go more smoothly and it helps you come to a solution that works for both sides as well and is reasonable for both sides and that I found really, really helpful. Something that is really fundamental to negotiation is the idea of finding an agreement that is win-win for both sides. So, I mean, this is really the only way that any kind of negotiation is ever going to work is if you get um, a situation where you get your needs met or your interests met and the person you're negotiating with gets their interests met. Any other situation where, you know, if you've managed to pull a fast one um, on somebody, it's never going to work in the long term. You know, just... the alternative that, to that is that you kind of manage to pull a fast one on somebody and negotiate something that uh, meets your interests and fundamentally is, is, is against their interests. And apart from that being unethical, it's just never going to work in the long term because the only business relationships that, that you can forge are ones where you are able to deliver value to others and receive value from them because the only way that you're able to really succeed in business is if you are able to deliver value to others and, and receive value from them. And the only way to do that is to find a way of negotiating, which is win-win. But it doesn't mean that you both need the same thing, because I mean, obviously, the, the reason that you're able to negotiate is because you want one thing, and they want another, you want their money, and they want your services. So there's always room for finding a way for you to get your needs met, and them to get their needs met. And that is a hugely important part of negotiation itself. I mean, that really is about having empathy for your client and realizing what it is that they need. And wherever you can, you know, if you can give something to somebody that they need, always give it to them because it's always good to try and, and get um, as many of the client's objectives met as possible, especially if there's something that is important to your client but isn't that important to you or isn't that costly to you. If it matters to them and you're able to give it to them, what I found was that it's just... It's always good to give it to them because being nice and helping people really, really works. It really helps your business. So that's really important. And the next point that I wanted to make is kind of linked to that, which is I found it really important to bear in mind that you just cannot rely on contract. I think it's really good to set out your standard terms of business, as I talked about earlier on, and also to set out a project proposal which um, says exactly what you will deliver for the money and, and gives, you know, is really explicit about what you're doing. However, any kind of contract, legal contract, is only going to work if it works because it meets the needs of both sides and because everyone has a vested interest in the project being successful. If you manage to get a contract signed, which you would only be able to enforce against the will of the other person using the court system, that is a really bad situation to be in because the court system is so expensive and so fraught with difficulties. I never took anyone to court, never tried to, um, and I did receive a couple of threat letters from other people um, during the, the course of my business. Um, which you probably will do, uh, it, it happens. But the main thing is, if you have agreements that work for both sides, you can avoid having to get into that kind of dispute. Um, and 
I think it's really important to start from the premise that you're never going to be able to rely on the court system. You're never going to be able to enforce contracts um, legally because it's such a nightmare to try and do so. So don't rely on the power of legal contracts to get what you want. Use the power of uh, win-win to get what you want by making sure that everyone has a vested interest in, in your agreement uh, actually going through to the end. And I guess just as with standard terms, whatever agreement that you have with somebody, the, what I found is the longer the agreement, the worse it is. The more complicated a contract is, um, just like standard terms, the more rubbish you've got to negotiate about. You know, um, This happens particularly if you ever do work for, um, for government departments or, um, or large bureaucratic organizations. They give you a contract which has got these vast, complicated terms and conditions which are always, you know, I used to hate reading that stuff because it's, 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 most of it is completely irrelevant, but it all can, but signing any of that stuff always involves taking on some kind of strange potential liability. And I just think it, it's so important to try and be as uh, straightforward and simple in your contracts as you can do. Um, to be ex as explicit and upfront, but still to keep it, keep it nice and simple so i hope that is helpful um that's just a kind of overview of some of the things to, that work for me um and i'd love to hear um any feedback that you have about your experiences with negotiating in entrepreneurship and thank you so much for listening thank you for listening to the voluntary life if you have feedback about the show please email jake at the voluntary if you enjoyed this program, please share the podcast with your friends or click the donate button on thevoluntarylife.com.